Hey everybody, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to GWN. I am Noctare, your host. I am going to wrap up Builder Hall 7 with a quick base design video talking about the four best Builder Hall 7 bases that I've run at Builder Hall 7. We're going to start off with the first base that I ran. I don't have it up right now because I think it works better at the lower levels of Builder Hall 7, the earlier uh, runs. But I do have it on Naiko Santa. And this is my first diamond base that I ran at Builder Hall 7 overall. Love this base. It did great. I mean, early on, I got well above the 4,000 trophy marker. Can't uh, can't say enough good about it. You'll see it's got the typical strong hub, which is what you're going to see in all of these designs. That is the best way to design a base in the Builder Hall. The, um, yeah, the off-center designs and such, you see, they're all right sometimes, but... If you can really cluster around the Builder Hall itself, I think that gives you the strongest defense uh, that you can really get in the game. And that means putting your air bombs, your giant cannon, the roaster, and typically the multi-mortar, although this one's off-center, but typically the multi-mortar right dead set up against the Builder Hall itself. I'll often take that multi-mortar and stick it off to uh, the side or a little bit further up to the top just kind of depending upon coverage and that's what we've got in this particular base here you can see the um the hidden teslas where they're positioned again overlapping coverages between each one of the different defenses the traps are positioned with as best i can anticipate where people are going to come from so a ground attack and i usually keep mine set to ground because i i don't think the the mines and mega mines really do a whole lot for air attacks anymore but um not when you know you've got the the drop ship that can tank for your air attack. But the Mega Mine on the far left to take troops as they come in. Then you've got the Crusher to take troops as they come in. On the far right, you've got regular mines and the Crusher to take troops as they come in. So you can kind of get the gist of, of the flow of this base and how it works. Now, taking a look at the three bases that I've been running over the last few months, we'll start off with my second base, which was this one. Again, strong hub, everything centered right around that uh, builder hall. A slightly off-center multi-mortar, as I said before, to provide a certain degree of coverage. In this case, it provides coverage with, overall, the, the center of the main part of the base. I'm not so worried about sacrificing one star by giving up the builder hall, but if I can stop other attacks that are coming in, I'm going to do that. And the multi-mortar is particularly key to stopping sneaky archer attacks when their cloak wears off, which, by the way, in the new builder hall 8 release, it really comes off a lot quicker so that is even better so this is the second base design uh, those of you who are coming up into builder hall 7 still or still have a little bit of time you may find this one works very well for you it has been redesigned a little bit from some of the other ones that you've seen out there but works really really well next base design this one is a combination of three different styled bases first of all I close off that main area so where you saw on the other diamond base it was opened this one, I want somebody to have to beat their way in, or I want them to, to waste their bomber's big bomb ability on it. If you come in from the left side, either one of those, totally wasting your time, okay? There's just enough coverage up there that anything that comes in is going to end up getting shot pretty quickly. You're not going to be able to pound on the walls with ease because, again, double cannons there are going to shoot you down. And on top of that, you've got a couple of bombs, you know, the, the mines here and here and here and here to help slow them down a little bit as well. So coming in from the left can be tough. You're going to have to use bombers to do that. And as I said, I like to waste a big bomb ability. So that's what that's for. Taking a look at the right side, whether it's the, the lower lower right or the upper right, same thing. You have to beat your way into the base. When you get in, you've got some junk buildings to deal with while you're getting pummeled by things like the cannons. Of course, the multi-mortar is going to beat on you no matter where you go, and that includes even some of the bombers because of the positioning, depending upon how the person drops his bombers. So you've got that kind of general coverage, if you will, and again, overlapping zones, and, and of course, the overlap on the, um, the junk buildings that you see with the archer towers. So designed for those same basic things. And then the last base I have for you, and this is the one that I've been running for the last couple of weeks, unceremoniously ripped from one of the top global players and then traps and mines and such set out there in a way that makes sense. This base has been doing pretty good for me. Anybody who comes in from the left, that lower left where you got the, the one segment of wall and then another long wall with a bracket and a long wall with a bracket, takes a while to bust your way through in there. 
So uh, you're only going to come through there with air if you really want to do it right. Coming in from, from ground on that side is just a royal pain. Air comes in from over there. Very quickly, they run into both the air bombs and the roaster. And that coverage combined with the coverage of the two archer towers and having to spend time beating down the gold storages, you're, you're going you're gonna to lose a lot of your air troops. So not perfect, not too strong, if you will, but strong enough to slow down most air attacks. Coming in from the right-hand side, first thing you see there is a whole bunch of junk buildings. You're going to have to work your way through the elixir collector, the gem mine, and the barracks there just to be able to get to the wall with your bombers. So you're going to waste some barbarians on that, or I guess potentially your uh, sneaky archers trying to get through it. And I think this is going to be even stronger against the sneaky archers now that the cloak has come down. The next row has got a bunch of junk buildings, include, including two high hit point buildings, the elixir storages, but you're going to be getting pummeled by the double cannon and the regular cannon, both of which have more than adequate range to hit outside of the wall while something's trying to blow the wall up. So nice coverage coming in. And then when you do finally get in, you got a mega mine right there. You've got four small mines right here that are essentially a mega mine combined within themselves. You've got the giant cannon that's going to be firing on you the entire time you're working your way through. And if you decide to come through with air, well, you got plenty of firecrackers there and the uh, archer tower to help keep you busy as well. So this is the current Builder Hall 7 base that I've been running, like I said, for the last two weeks. Runs very well. Have not had any real issues to speak of. Um, as long as I'm doing my part and getting about 65% two-star better, I will typically win the match so there you go that's the end of builder hall 7 guys later on today i'll be coming out with a video on builder hall 8 that will include first and foremost my upgrade uh, i guess probably the first new base design and maybe even a couple of attacks i'll be working with the super pekka over the next week here kind of getting a feel for her i mentioned in an article on the blog blog.clashmaniac.com i think the two strongest attacks are going to be jibok which is boxer giants bombers and cannon carts as well as minion drops, and maybe even uh, uh, some Jai Witch in here, I think. And eh, you might you might see some baby dragons. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Having that additional camp, six camps at Builder Hall 8, really, really opens things up. I mean, your drop mitch can carry in two things of drop or two camps of drop ships now. You can um, expand your uh, uh, your cannon carts because now you've got three in each camp plus you've got that six camp so you can go in with three camps a total of nine cannon carts lots of different things offensively you can do at this level and there'll be a few challenges with the new defenses but nonetheless I think that I think that the offense is going to continue to reign supreme at any rate that's what I've got for you today thanks a lot for sticking around to the end of the video and I hope you find these bases useful if you're new to the channel please do hit the subscribe button and uh, click that little bell there so that you'll get notifications when I put out new videos and if this is a return visit for you hey thanks for coming back I appreciate it on that note I'm out of here and I will catch you all later with Builder 8 Builder Hall 8 content thanks a lot bye bye